نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون النبي والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا شديدا يسلي لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم اما يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اخوه الايمان السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Just thanks to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us another opportunity to gather here. Again another beautiful Friday which is the last Friday in the month of Zulhijah in the year 1444 after the year of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is equivalent to the 14th day of the month of July year 2023 after the birth of Nabi Isa the Jesus Christ alayhi salam and more. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has, who has uh, preserved us to this. May he continue to shower his mercy upon the noble soul of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no, alayhi wa sallam. His, household, his companions, and we that we are on his path. And Allah guide us aright and establish our feet continuously on his path. And let us be among the image of the Jannah to the Jews. Amen. Wala hawla wa rakota in the world. My intention is to discuss the rampant incidents that has been happening around the globe precisely in Sweden which is the body of the only Quran and incessant blasphemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the secretion of our only scripture which is Al-Quran al karim but as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it We are going to discuss it extensively and we are going to start from what is our Quran itself before going into the desecration of the holy scripture of Allah which was revealed on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and passed was as a guide which need to be guiding us on the path Al Quran al Karim is a word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we all know Huwa kalamullah is the words and wordings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al munazzal bi nabiyyi sallallahu alaihi wasallam which was revealed on the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam al mujizu bi nafsihi this quran al karim this word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is very noble has miracles in it the recitation itself is a miracle The word itself is a miracle. The actions in Quran are all miracles. So this Quran al mutaabbad bi tilawati whoever is reading whoever is reciting whoever is working with the dictates with the dictates of the Quran mutaabbad bi is worshiping is an act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whoever is reading it tilawati wa afal bi aqwali is being tabbud is worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the recitation in the usefulness of the word is in Quran into action translating the word is into action is an act of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al maktub fi al mushaf this Quran this word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is written was written on the letters letters of skin of animals the scapulas of camels those are the things that were used during the time of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to inscribe quran the verses of quran on top of them and they were kept during the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam before it was now transposed into the scripture into the papers that we are reading today al manqul ilayhi bi mutawatir bitawati al-manqul ilayhi bitawati this quran 
was revealed unto Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam bit by bit. It was not revealed at once. From the Sirah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we got to know that the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam within the space of 33 years. So Quran and Karim that me and you we are reading today is not what was revealed at once to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This al Quran al Karim has different kind of names that is being born. That whichever way we use among all these names that we want to mention, they refer to al Quran al Karim. As Allah subhanahu wa taala told us that inna al Quran al Karim fi kitabim matnoon la yamasuhu illa muta arun. That is the first name that al Quran al Karim has. The Quran itself. It's the name given to that scripture. And this Quran was revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fikitabi Maklum is in a book. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in a book that has been sealed. La yamasuhu illa mutawalu. Nobody should hold on to this Quran except those that believe in it and those that are pure. So if you, are, if you, if you have some impurities in you, you must not carry the Quran. So you must, take, you must be in a state of purity before you can carry Al Quran. The first name that is ascribed to Al Quran is Karim, is the Quran itself. The second name is Al Kitab. If you are referring to anything as Al Kitab, which is the only scripture, is Al Quran is Karim. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran chapter 2, verse 2, Bada Huzulillah in Shaitan al Rajim, Alif Lami, Zalik Al Kitab. Allah said, the first three alphabet, it is me, Allah Ta'ala, that knows the meaning. Alif Lamin. Allah Ta'ala will be right with that. Nobody knows the meaning of this. In answer, Zalik al Kitab is referring to Al Quran. Al Kitab, that Kitab, there are no ambiguities in that holy book. And what is the, which is the book? Or what is the book? Is this our Al Quran? And whoever believes in it, put down in the Those that will believe in it are those that will be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whosoever is not conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not believe in that holy book. And the only book is what? Al Quran al Karim. This is the second name that Al Quran al Karim is bearing. The third name is Al Qur'an. What do you mean by Al Qur'an? Something that disintegrates the falsehood from the truth. That separates the darkness from the light is Al Quran. We have to write the Quran in the Holy Quran. Quran itself is called Al Quran. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told us that Tabarak al Ladi nazar al Quran li abdi li akuna lil alamin al nadira. Tabarak all glorification, all adoration belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that has revealed unto His servant Al Quran. Something that we use. To distinguish between the truth and the false. To be that Quran, that book, that measure that we have revealed unto our servant, it is to be used to separate the falsehood from the truth and to be used as a guidance and as a warning. To be used as a warning, a template that will be warning the people that if you do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish you. And it's going to be Bashiran. Bashiran, Bashiran wa Nadira. It's going to be bringing light that if you do the right thing, you are going to enter the Jannah. But to do the bad thing, you are going to enter the Empire. So part of the name that Al Quran and Karim has is Al Quran. To be disintegrated between the falsehood and the truth. Number four, part of the name of Al Quran is that wherever we are, wherever we had or we hear about that, is referring to Al Quran is Azikir. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa inna wa Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said another name for Al Quran is Azikir. Something that will be reawakening us from our state of slumberness. That all of us, we have slept off. We have forgotten that these are our boundary limits. 
We should not enjoy ourselves to the extent that we are not going to go out of the way. It is the Quran that will be calling us back. So the calling of that Quran will be a zikir. Fazakir, fa inna zikira tanfaul mu'mini. Allah is telling Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Remember, remind, remind your people because in reminding them, they will keep on reawakening themselves from the state, from the state of slumberness. They will be guided as Allah subhanahu wa taala told them. Part of the name of Al Quran is Atanzil, something that was revealed. And as we have mentioned in our tarif, in the definition of the Quran, is that Quran was al mampulu ilayhi bi The Quran was revealed unto Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam piece by piece. Brothers, this is our Quran is caring for you all. As Allah said, who attend thee is something that we revealed unto him. Quran was not manufactured. Like the Orientalists, the Mustashrikun, the way they are claiming. Even but during the time of Shay, Imam Abbas, Ibn Abbas and Shaybani, the Khalifa al Muminin that was there during the time that Imam Abbas was existing. We all know that we have four school of thought. Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad ibn Ambar, Radiallahu ta'ala and Imam Jamiya. During this time, there was the Adirul that he was the chef of the Baghdad then. The Amirul Muminin then, Arun al-Rashid, the Mu'tazila, who are the Mu'tazila? The Mu'tazila are those that are saying Quran who are mahluk, the Quran was created the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. The Quran, were, uh, they were, oh, Al-Quran wasn't the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Quran was created like the human being. Mu'tazila is the one that said that. And I told us, and we are still going to talk about them very soon. The Khawarij, the Mu'tazila, and the Akladiyun were the people that Imam Muhammad ibn Ambal faced with lots of challenges are the Mu'tazila that are following Quran wa makhluk that our Quran is a creator. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created me and you, so also Allah created Al Quran that Kalam Al Quran is a Kalamullah. The Quran was in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what we are saying. But Imam Muhammad ibn Ambal stood firm and rigidly that no, Al Quran is a Kalamullah. Harun al Rashid, he died. During the time of Harun al Rashid is when we have a sheikh called Sheikh Ubalulu. Sheikh Ubalulu wasn't a madman, but he was somebody that Allah gave vision. They see him like a madman, but intellectually intelligent wise, he wasn't a madman. If he's telling you not to do this, if you do it, you are going to see the repercussion in a negative way. That, is, that was Sheikh Ubalulu. He existed during the Era of Harun al Rashid. Harun al Rashid was among the Ulafa al Rashidun in the Abbasid, from the Abbasid Caliphate. So, while he was alive, the Mu'tazila, they frustrated Imam Muhammad ibn Ambal that he should denounce, saying that Al Kala Al Qurani wa Kalamullah. He said, No. Al Qurani wa Kalamullah wa Al Qurani leza mahluk. Harun al Rashid was on this. He passed out. His son, Al Amin, came on board. This Mu'tazila, they gained prominence, they gained opulence, they gained affluence around the Amirul Muminin, then, who was Al Amin, the successor of Harun al Rashid. They frustrated Imam Ibn Ahmad ibn Ambar to the extent that. They had to go and imprison him. He was in the prison for more than two and a half years. Just because they wanted him to denounce that Al Quran wasn't the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he stood firm that whatever you want to do, continue doing it. I will still stand on my head that Quran is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They imprisoned him. They brought him to the square in the open field of the community. He was chastised 
He was beaten. They did hell out of him. They beat hell out of him. By the end of the day, they released him. After the release, not quite long, and I mean, the son of Arun al Rashid, who was the Amirul Mu'minin then, he passed out. His younger brother, Al Ma'amun, he was at the area of the province of Khurasan. Where we are calling Khurasan are the area of all this Iran, Iraq, Iran, and so on. He was the Amirul Mu'minin in that province. Al Ma'amun, the younger brother to Al Amin, they are both the son of Harun al Rashid. But he, he was overwhelmed with the support of the Mu'tazila. The Mu'tazila infuriated him, the, the, the Mu'tazila penetrated him to the extent that he also frustrated the life of Imam Ahmad ibn Ambal. To cut the long story short, Imam Muhammad stood his turn, reading him, as me and you need to stand on our own feet firmly, that Al-Quran, huwa kalamullah, wa Quran ilaysa makhlu. Quran was not created. It was revealed, we are talking about Al-Tanzil. It was revealed unto Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where Ramadan was 21 of the year that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started revealing it unto him. So part of the name of al Quran is Al-Tanzil. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa inna hu la tanzilu min rabbil alameen. We Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we revealed it from Prophet, we revealed it from us. We Allah, we revealed it unto Prophet Muhammad. We, who is we? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can say we, me. I can't say we, I can only say I. It's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can use the plural term. Is the one that can say Na'anu. Me, I can only say Anu. So Allah said, We reveal this to our only prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that has created all the mankind. These are some of the names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ascribed to the Quran. That me and you, we should all know. Whenever we are hearing about them, they are, they are being referred to Al Quran and Jerry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the noble blessing of Al-Quran and Al-Kalim. Mm. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, we've all understood what Quran is. We've known some of the names that Quran are bearing. Prophet Muhammad told us that Allah said, Inna lillahi alina fil ad. Me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have family on the earth. As me and you, we have family. We have our mother's family, maternal family, we have our paternal family, families. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he has family on the earth. The Sahaba now has to do. Who are they? Because whenever Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speak, the Sahaba will allow him to land, to arrive at a conclusive destination and ask him, O oh, our master, what do you mean by this that you have said? We don't understand. Papala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now responded to them that Alul Laifun Ad, the family of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth of it, whom Alul Qur'ani wa khasotuhu. Kama kola Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the family of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth of it are those that are reciting, that are reading, that are memorizing, that are working according to the dictates of Al Quran the Karim. Wa khasotuhu. And those are the people that Allah has chosen as his family. Brothers, me and you, how conversant are we with Quran and Jerry? How are we abiding by the dictates of Quran and Jerry? So whoever is not practicing what Quran and Jerry must say, is not part of the family of Allah. That is the family of Shaitan. May Allah not say, let us be a victim. Mm -hmm. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah specifically has declared that whoever is acquainted with Al Quran and Karim is going to be among my family. May Allah let us be among them. Abu Raja, Ibn Usayyid, Rajallahu Ta'ala, he called upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A sahabi from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kuna jalisa illa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that one very day we sat beside Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fasadim to who we are good, we now heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ta'ala Rasulullah al-Baqarah. You people should go and learn Surah al-Baqarah. That is Quran chapter 2. 
fa inna fa inna ada al fa inna ada baraka dan in aku in suratul bakara di Quran chapter 2 there are blessings there are accountable number of blessings in it Bureda Abu Usayi is the one that mentioned this word. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them that. What are the people who are And whoever leaves Surah Al-Baqarah without reading it, that person is a loser. And is losing a countable number of places. One very day, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala alayhi In the treasury, the house, or the, the warehouse, that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to store the booties, the ganai, all the booties that they used to bring collect back from the war field. Whatever they gather from there, they used to store it in the warehouse. It's different from the treasury that they used to keep making money. So what very day? Shaitan, Iblis, Ladatullah Ali. He now went there to go and steal. And the guardian, the security man at the entrance of the house was Abu Huraira, Abdul Rahman ibn Sahar, radiallahu ta'ala alayhi. So the first day, Shaitan gave the form of an old man to come and steal. At the point of getting access into the facility, Abdul Rahman ibn Sahar, Abu Huraira, caught him. Why are you here? He said, you only came here to come and get what he's going to eat. Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala alayhi, listened to him, but the man, he believed was pleading with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala knew left him to go because he was in asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was pleading with the name of Allah. So those of you that they are pleading with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are not granting mercy to those people that are seeking for your favor, that means you too might not receive the favor of Allah. That means you are telling them that Allah is not so mighty that you can use his name to get something from you. They are asking you, the life of the Holy, the life of the Holy, the life of the Holy, to forgive because of Allah, and you didn't forgive. Then you want to forgive because of the Shaitan. So that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, is, not, is not so magnificent to you. And you don't, Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala, he went to tell Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the letter to Bariya, last night, one old man came, he wanted to steal, and I caught him. But he was pleading with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I later released him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yo, Abu Huraira, very well, you have done well. But that your visitor will still come back. The following day, the old man, the thief, the Ibilis, still came back with the intention of coming and stealing. Abu Huraira caught him again. He pleaded with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Huraira released him. The dawn of the following day, Abu Huraira went and told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That person came back last night. And he was pleading because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he released him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that your visitor will come back another day. The third day, this is this, Lanatullah Ali. He went there again with the name of stealing. Abu Huraira caught him for the third time. He was pleading, he was pleading. Because of the mercy that Abu Huraira showed or showered upon this Iblis, Iblis now said, let me teach you something. Because you have been so merciful to me. The first day, the second day, you left me. So he told me, let me also bless you with something. Abu Huraira was so curious that what can you bless me with? He now told Abu Huraira, the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, whoever is reading it every day, the hand of Shaitan will not overpower him. And that is what? Amana Rasulu, Bima Muzila Elehmi Rabi wa Numilu. That's Kulu Amana Bimlai, Wa Malai Kati, Wa Utuli, Wa Utuli, till the end. Those are the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, Quran chapter 2. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala alayhi never wanted to be me. He went back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to come mention to him. I'm getting to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, So Dr. Wawa Kazu, that yes, he has said the truth, but he is a liar. That that your friend, 
He's a liar. He was not a liar. He's a liar. that it was a nefarious person. He's not a sincere person. But what he has said is the truth. Whoever is reciting the last two verses of Surah al Baqarah before he sleeps, no any evil, either jinn, either shayatin, either the tail will sue it. The evil eyes we have over, we have power over that person till dawn. If you read it in the morning throughout the day, it will be a protection that will shield you from evil arms. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as we are narrating from what Buraida ibn Usayyid told us that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ta'ala Masulat al-Bakra wa Ali Imran, in continuation of the Hadith, that every one of you, you should go and learn Surah al-Bakra, Quran chapter 2, the cow. Wa Ali Imran, Quran chapter 3, the Imran. And Imran was the father of whom? Sayyidatuna Maryam. The mother of Nabi Yunai Isa alayhi salam ulfa. And it is this surah to Ali Imran, this Quran chapter 2 that Allah spoke about to those who are to Uhud. After talking about surah to Bakura, in continuation of that hadith, Buray Allah Guru Zayi, Nadia Rasul asked them to go and learn about surah to Bakura and surah to Ali Imran. Because these two chapters, these two surahs, they are two flowers. They are two flowers. We know how flowers used to be very fragrant. And on the day of Kiyama, these two verses, these two chapters, Surah to Bakara and Surah to Ali Imran, they are going to become a, a shade that will cover the clouds on top of them on the day of the hour. That they will be the shade that will be following them up and down. If there is sun, sun will not be able to penetrate their head and penetrate their body. So this new surah will be like a shade, like a canopy, like an umbrella of whoever used to read Surah to Bakara and Surah to Ali Imran. They are going to cover whoever is reading it. They are going to cover him, protect him, as I have mentioned. And they will protect him like a bird that just gives birth to the little one that the birds are kept inside the nest. You know, if a bird just gives birth to the new one, he will be protecting the nest. If he started laying the eggs, He'll be going up and down, going up and down. All the eyes, wherever he, the bird is, has flown to, his mind will be towards the egg he has laid and kept inside the nest. So after some time, the egg will be hatched. So if the mother bird goes out for greener pasture to go and look for food for the little eggs, for the little birds, he will make sure that they are well protected because of the foreign enemies. Me and you will be the enemy to the new born birds. So the mother bird will be running up and down to ensure that the new birds are being protected. So that is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that after these two chapters, Surah to Bakura, Surah to Ali Muran, are there to cover us, to protect us, to serve like an umbrella, to serve like a canopy, like a shield, they will also be protecting us like birds inside the nest. You can see the beauty of those two chapters, not talk of the whole Quran. Why in the Quran? Rasul continues to be saying that Al Quran, Yati Yom Al Kiyam, Abi Sohibidi, in a Yusiu, and in Kabul, Kaburidi. That on the day of Kiyam, Al Quran will come and meet Sohibidi. Who is Sohibidi? The person that used to recite all the Quran. That is the friend to the Quran. The Quran will come into to come and meet him. In his grave, we will now be relating with him. He won't allow him to know the loneliness of the cover. For the person that is doing what? That is reading Quran and working with what Quran has said. Quran will ensure Quran will come to meet this person in the grave. He will come and meet him in the grave. Quran will ensure him like a very handsome person, like a very handsome 
man. That is the image that the Quran will bring. Because any righteous servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside his grave will not be threatened. All what is going to pass through will have scale through it. So the remaining thing that we face, we face facing the grave is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah come to us among us mm. and give us the art that we are going to do that we attain this mercy. Mm. Inshallah. For Yaqulu Lahu, when this handsome man meet this so evil Quran, this man that used to read the Quran while he was alive. This handsome man that, that is going to be Quran, that will come in the form of an of, of what? Of an handsome man. He will not tell his friend. Do you know me? The man in the grave. That is a friend of Quran. We now say, no, I don't know you. Fayaqulu al Quran. Quran will not say, Anna Swaibuka al Quran. Me, I'm your friend, the Quran. Which Quran? Allah di Adi Amatika, Bil Hujuri, what the Hatika, Lelika. I'm your friend that you used to read when you are in your place of work, when you are in your office, you will struggle, create time to read. When you are in your shop, you will create time and read. When you are on transit inside the you will create time and read. What's the hard to I am the one that denied you what? Lay in Latuka your night. Because you want to leave me, you are passing through sleepless nights. And that Quran of that yesterday and here with you today, loneliness and solitude will not be yours in this couple. This is just Quran, reading Quran. We have not been talking about salat. We are not talking about song. We are not talking about other muamalas that you are doing. Just reading Quran alone. Why not that? You are already to Jarati. Why not that? You are already full of Jara. The Quran will not tell him that today you have gained all the gains that a businessman will gain. Any loss will never be your own because you have worked for it yesterday while you are on So today, it will be reaping the fruit of your efforts. That is what Quran will keep telling, so it will Quran. As Quran is saying this, you know the Quran comes in form of a handsome man. When he is discussing this, a mother an angel will now come on his right hand, and the angel will come on another angel will come on his left hand side. When you know Allah Rashi is that will on his head, they will now place a crown. They will place a crown on his head. When you see while he will pull the and they will wear his parents with two ceremonial gowns. You know, like you are graduating from school. They ask you to bring money to come and collect ceremonial gown. After placing crown on his head, they will now go and do what? They will go and wear for his parents. Kula Chaini, two gowns, ceremonial gowns, and those gowns will be fabricated for our gender. This is just for a child that has learned Quran and he turned himself to show him Quran, the friend of Quran, and he's working with Quran, he's reading Quran. So the benefit of him being out of Quran, the benefit will be transferred to whom? To his parents. Both his parents. Both of his parents. For Yaquluna, the parents in our house, the mother, the Satan, the other. Why are we clothed like this? Why are we adjourned with this ceremonial ground? What is happening? What have we done that you have merited this? For Yaquluna, the other. They will not tell them, the angels will not tell them, one of the angels will not tell them that, Al-Quran, al Quran, Quran, that one of your children, one of your children was what? Was the friend of Quran. So the benefit of him being a friend of Quran, being a friend of Quran doesn't mean that you don't be carrying Quran up and that. You must be reading it. You must memorize it. He must be working with the dictator that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dictated to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is how you can be so able to run. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after instructing the angels, 
to do this for the parents. The angels will now tell them that it is your son, or it is your son that has done this in the world. He himself is enjoying it. Part of the enjoyment is the one that is transferred to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us be children that will bring benefits to our parents. Mm -hmm. Let our own children too be beneficial to us mm -hmm. in this world and in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. Not that alone. Allah now says, Summa, if we sue her, we do it in Janati or the Faha. Allah now says, Spread for them a red carpet reception, a GTR road that we know. They say, if you need a rug now, you should order for a GTR road. If you need a post tree, ask for Italian or post trees, right? This one nobody knows. They will be fabricated in agenda, they will be used in agenda. Allah will not say because we we have learned Quran. In the benefit of the Quran we have known, our parents will now benefit from it. So when they are entering agenda, after they are giving the child so even Quran, they are giving him a child a crown, fitted crown on his head. After Mary is buried, ceremonial ground of Algeria, they will now lay a red carpet reception for them. So anywhere they will be stepping on in Algeria, they are going to be stepping on, on, on the rock. You can see the beauty of Quran alone. Brother, don't let us be losers. And don't let us be a loser to our parents. You yourself don't be a loser. And don't be a loser of benefits to your parents. So, when you did that, don't for them. Bapala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, again, An Abu Amamat al-Bahli. Abu Amamat, Abu Amama al-Bahli now said from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's what Hadith has been concluded. If Grau Quran, Abu Amama al-Bahli said that Prophet Muhammad instructed them to Ikrau Quran, be reading Quran. فَإِنَّهُ يَادِ يَوْمَ الْجَمَامَ شَبِيعَ لِأَسْعَابِهِ That whoever is reading the Quran in the Quran, on the day of Qiyamah, the Quran will come as the protector to protect that person on the day of Qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us be among you that the Quran will protect. Amen. Brothers, we have defined what the Quran is. We have told us some of the names of the Quran. We have told us the benefit of Quran, not only you on soluble Quran. We are told of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he has family. And who are the family of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They are who are in Quran. Not only are in Quran alone, but who can sorti. They are the chosen ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let them be among Al Quran wa Khasatullah. In Allah Malaikata we saw in Allah Nabi, Ya Yu Ladina Aman Sulla Ali wa Sali Tasima. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala mala nabi ya brother. We give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us another opportunity again to be here today. May Allah hand this as a mark of ibadah. The second verse of our khutbah, we'll be talking about the revelation of Qur'an. And I told us, and the exception, what we really want to discuss is what we call a tajdif, blasphemy in Islam, and the burning of Quran. Because some of the idiotic people, some of the nefarious people that are burning Quran today, they are telling us that there was a Sahaba that also burned Quran. Is it true or not? Yes. Quran was burnt. Why? And who burnt it? We are going to come there. But I want us to know what is our Quran and carry. We should not just jump on that. Because if we want to fight, we should know the kind of fight we want to fight. We should have our hujja. And this action that we are now is not just killing people up and down and destroying people's integrity. Going on social media, just tearing people's integrity. No. Bring your hujja, bring your evidence. That is the era that we are now. So the idiots that are born in Quran, both local and international, what is their hujja? Then how are we going to manage it? There is one idiot here in your balance here. They call him Aniolong or Talolong. 
One young bad guy, he finished on Federal Polytechnic offer. Very small boy. He had also done that to our Holy Scripture. He was a Muslim before he now went to join the traditional worshippers and when he I saw his life on what he posted himself. And how he is denigrating and desecrating the Holy Scripture of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is our own guidance. So how do we manage this in the face of these nefarious activities? Protesting in Islam, is it allowed? We are going to discuss all this. But I don't want to jump up to that. What is Al Quran Karim? How did Al Quran Karim come out to Prophet Muhammad? How did we get it? Is it the original Quran that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we are still reading today? We need to know all this so that we can know where we belong to. May Allah subhanahu wa taala guide us in this discussion. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that when Quran was to be revealed on him from the Sira of Rasul. This was supposed to be another Sira class that we are going to treat. But because of this, I want to jump some things and come to this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before Ejah Gabriel went to him, solitarily, he used to leave Mecca and go to Garul Iraq. Garul Iraq is just like four kilometers to Masjid al Haram. That is where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go and stay every day. At that, he spent two or three days. The only wife he had then was say, that's not Khadija to go to Kuwaiti and Asadiya. So he used to go there and go and do what? Go to go and meditate. And be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how the rampant, how the rampaging, or the idol worshiping in Mecca will come to an end. This is what some people take as hujja in doing halwa. What you call that halwa is total seclusion. That Chedi, if you are asking us now not to do halwa, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go and stay in Garul Iraq. Yes, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go and stay in Garul Iraq. Only him then. But Salawat has not been revealed unto him. All this time that we are talking, he has not been called to, for Al Israel when he arrived. No Salat. Even said that in Khadija, she never prayed the prayer we are praying now. Because he has died before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given the salat or the salawat. The act of worship then, in form of salat, known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because all the Abi Allah, all the prophets, they also do salawat. They also observe Allah, Akbar, they do ruku, they do everything. But how was it performed? It's different from our own Allah ta'ala. So before the death of Sayyidatina Khadija, no prayer. It's part of the hujah that some of our brothers that are doing halwa are saying that yes, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go to Gabriel Iran. There too they can stay in their room. They won't do a hamsu salawa. They won't go out on Friday like this, go out of salat. And whoever attacks the salat, whoever is, is praying the hamsu salawa and doesn't pray it on time, he has to pinch his judgment to pass through before getting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever doesn't pray on time, we are going to observe the prayer, but not on time. We are, we are going to face 15 consequences of chastisement. While you are alive, six. At the point of death, three. Inside your cupboard, three, making 12. When you are walking up from your grave, you face the consequences inside of Allah's body, another three will meet up with you, making 15. It's in a book we call Al Kabahi. 15, just a tariful salat. Somebody that doesn't pray on time. We are not talking about the person that is not praying. He doesn't pray on time. He can know, I keep on your Lord, know you, that we pray Madrid by Isha together, that we pray after Salah to subit, the remaining four, we will pray it back when he got home after 8 p.m. That yes, there will be many, so there will be so much in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kai, you had the una lawa la dina amanu, wa ma yada una illa amfusahum, wa ma yashikurun. People who be in Maradon, for that the Umullah um Maradon, for law was that the animal be Makano yet city. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go to that Garu Iraq. You see that Garu Iraq. May Allah give every one of us opportunity to go for Hajj and Umrah. When you go there, it's part of the place they will take you to for Ziyara. It's in Makka, not in Medina. It's not far from Madrid al Haram where we have the Kaaba. That cave is the one we call Hira. 
Garul Ira. Right? He's on top of the mountain we call Jabalun Nur. That Jabalun Nur is the one that bore like a pregnant woman, carry a hembryo. That Jabal, that mountain is the one that carry the cave. The cave is called Hira. The mountain is called Jabalun Nur. It's called Jabalun Nur because that was the mountain where Quran was revealed unto Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The other one, Jabal is soul, was the one that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, him and Abu Bakr, it was the other second mountain that they hid during the time of Hijrah. Two of them are not far away from each other, they are both in Mecca. But this one that we are talking about, Garul Irai, cave of Ira, Kogo, Kogo, Nahira, right? You can't stand up. Conveniently like this inside, and it cannot accommodate two people. And a large one of the Allah strategically, pro, strategically directed or established that cave that whoever is inside that cave will face the direction of Kibla. It's a place that you can go and climb. It's just like one hour, 20 minutes walk. So, any one of us that is healthy, if you go to Mecca, you go for Ziara, you can go and climb it. It's one hour, 20 or 30 minutes from bottom to top. Mm -hmm. Yes, but if you know you are not healthy, don't go and climb it because you won't come down that down. You go and see where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is and where the fourth revelation got to him. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to go there. So one very day, and he said, according to the Surah, whenever he's going, there are some particular stones along his road, whenever he's going there, that they need to do salam alaikum to him. All this, we can meet it in a book we call The Seal of the, the Nectar of the Seal or the Seal of the Nectar. Rahik al Maktoum, the Siratil and Nabawiyah. That there are some stones along the road, along the alignment that is flying, that they need to do salam alaikum to him. Whenever I go into that, you are Jabal Saw, Jabal Nur. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there one very day. So, and the Gabriel came. I need to be cutting it. And the Gabriel came. He now held on to him that Ikra, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an unlettered person. He doesn't know A, B, C. He doesn't know Ali Batasa, but Allah subhanahu wa sallam, he can't read Ali Batasa. He can write Ali Batasa, but every knowledge is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with. But he can't read, nor can he write. Who will be you? He can read, he can write, but he knows everything. Allah Akbar. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He now asked him, Ikra, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ma'ala Bikari, what am I going to read? The second time, he asked him to read again. He now drew Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He drew him closer. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that when he drew him closer, I see he wants to tear him into pieces. He held him very well that all his chests were vibrating, palpitating. He said, Ma'ana Bikori, what am I going to read? He told him the third time again, Ikra! This is Rabika, Allah the Khalafa. Okay, you don't know anything to read. Okay, Ikra, this is Rabika. Oh, yeah, read now. In the name of your Lord, Allah the Khalafa, that created you, first of all, and perfected your creation. Allah the creators of people, he didn't perfect their creation. You see, some people, they have seven fingers. Some people, one of their eyes will be here, one will be here, one will be here. You see, some people, their head even turned 360 degrees. This is the best physique that Allah thinks it befits us. Those of you that Allah gave you black skin, that you are turning it to red, you are telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is imperfect, you know. Allah is the best physique that Allah gave you. That was how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed in the Gabriel to teach him and he taught him. It was narrated that it was from this Ikra that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was confirmed as a prophet. Because there is difference between a prophet and a messenger. It's not all the prophets that were messengers. 
That's another theological discussion. But it's all the pro all the pro all the messengers that are prophets. Inshallah, we are going to talk about who among the prophets are messengers and those that are not messengers. Allah will give us opportunity. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rushed down. He went home. On getting home, he met his wife. Already, another rewire said, "Say that to Khadija had sent people on an errand. People have been looking for her husband for him, for her, because he can't find her. She can't find her. She can't find him." So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came back himself, and he was clamoring, "Zamiluni, Zamiluni, Zamiluni." That, oh my wife, please, because he was shivering because of the cold. And that was the first time that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, physically saw the exact creation of Angel Gabriel. And we're told that Angel Gabriel has 600 wings. And the wings cover the whole of the entire sky. Come here, you wait and see. We're told that. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw Angel Gabriel twice the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him. One was when he brought Ikra to him. The second one was during the night of Isra'i wal Mi'ra. Subhanallah asra bi abdi'i min layla min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-lazi barakna awlahu niduriyahu min ayatina inna huwa sabi'un alim. That journey, when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to pick Muhammad. When Angel Gabriel came to pick Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was in the room of Umu Ani, and he picked him, take him to Hikir al Ismail, the Atim, that circular area beside Kaaba. He observed Nafla. From there, they rode on Ali Burak. Within the twinkling of an eye, Ali Burak took them to Betul Maqdis. They observed another salat in that masjid al Aqsa in Jerusalem. We have talked about this masjid. We have talked about the benefits when we are talking about Palestine. From there, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, according to one sira, said, the other Anbiya Allah, they came to receive him. So he led them in prayer. They came out, and the Gabriel said, you take honey or you take milk. I stopped your future, he took milk. And from there, they rode the Ali Burak again, and they went to heaven. So, the physical image, the physical representation of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created in the Gabriel. That was the second time that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him. Every other time, he will either come in form of Adayyatul Kalibi, the most handsome man among the Sahaba in Medina. Or he come in another image. If we are talking about Wahayu, the difference about Wahayu and Ilham. Inspiration and whispering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is wahi? What is il'am? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us opportunity to discuss it. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ran inside. After some time, his wife discovered that what had happened to my husband is not something that I can comprehend. It's something that we call like uh, hallucination. So immediately, she ran. To our cousin, Walakabinu Nafal. Walakabinu Nafal was a cousin to Sayyidatuna Khadija. We are talking all this, we are talking is about Al Quran. On getting to Walakabinu Nafal, Walakabinu Nafal was among the Hunafa. And what I mean by Hunafa, they are four. These four Hunafa, they are the people that Islam did not meet them, but they believe in Islam, that whenever Islam comes, they will do. Some of them are the yesterday Christians. Some of them are Christ Jew. They do Christianity and Jewish together. So what happened to Nafal? When they got him, he now said to Khadija that you see this your husband. What happened to him was what happened to Nabi Musa alayhi salam Allah. Tilika na Musa Musa. That what happened to him now is what happened to Nabi Yuna Musa, and as you see him, he's going to be among the prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to send to his ummah, and they are going to prostrate him. This land that you are seeing is going to become hostile for him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now asks, what are Kabunu now for? 
that Amukurija, whom are they going to send me out of this community, my father's land? As I used to tell us, if your father's house is being hostile to you, your father's family are being hostile to you, leave them and go to a promised land. They will kill you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never wanted to leave Mecca. Allah told him, you have to leave. And he left. And when he was going, he went to the name of 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 By the end of the day, he became victorious. So every one of us, if they are frustrated not where we are, let's leave them. Go to another place. Go and establish your daula. Then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer your prayer, then you now come back. And all of them, you now celebrate your success with them. Ah, why did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do that? Fatu Maka, Manda Allah Baitika, Manda Allah Baita, Abu, Abu Sufyan, Baba Ami. All those that are frustrated, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, leave them. Leave them. At the end of the day, they became Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that kind of heart so that we can be flexible of people that have done wrong to us. Allah hawla wa la quwata illa bi So, that was how the message of prophethood got to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that was the first one. There was another second revelation. After some time, there was no communication. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became very uncomfortable and they started mocking him up and down. That ah, Allah has forsaken him. Allah has forgotten him. I told us about one of the father of Abu ibn al Asi, his father, Al Asi ibn Wahim. His father was the one that was mocking Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam up and down in Mecca when Ibrahim died. Right? They are among the people that were saying Allah has forsaken him. The message that is claiming that he is receiving. Because he cut Al Wahim for like Sita to Ashur. For like six months, for like eight months, another way I said like one year, another way I said like three years. But we need to take the smallest one. Let's say like within three, four, five, six months. No communication from Allah through Angel Gabriel to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam started becoming very nervous. And what he going back to Jabal Hira. So one very day that he was there, he had a message. Somebody calling Ya Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He looked to the left, he can't see anybody. He looked to the right, he can't see anybody. He looked front, he looked back. You know me and you two, we are searching for something. We won't quickly we look up. So he searched around. He didn't see anybody. But he was hearing his name. After some time, he now looked up. He now saw somebody sitting on the throne. And that was Jibreel. But not in that form that he was the first time he came. He communicated with him. And immediately, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became feverish. He started rushing down home. He got home. He was slumbering his wife to go by and go by. After some time, Allah sent the Jibreel back to him. That, Ya, you are not sure. Come, for answer. What up, for Kafir? What's he have, for Toy Hill? What who is that? Like seven verses, like that. The first seven verses of Surah Al Mudassir. Our scholars made us to understand that this year you are modest, right? Is the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicated his risala to Prophet Muhammad. That was when Allah stamped him as a messenger. The fourth visit was as a prophet. The second one, come, stand up, find him, and go and warn your people, go and do what for them. So that was when his risala started. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with every one of us. Al Quran and Karim, this is how it started coming for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers, why is it that the Quran, or how was the Quran arranged? We all know that the first revelation was what? Surah Al Kalam, Ikira bi ismi rabbika ladi khalako. And that was what? The and that is what? The 96th chapter in the Holy Quran. And he said, Maki Surah, because we have two types of revelation. We have the Maki and we have the Madani. The ones that were revealed in Mecca are the ones that were called Maki. The ones revealed in Medina, they are the Surah to Madani. Why was Surah to Kalam, Ikirabi Isimura Bika, that was the first revelation? Why was 
Why was it not the first chapter of the Holy Quran? Why is this Surah Al-Fatiha? Ashwat al-Bakura was among the last chapters that revealed in Madani, in Medina, and it's the second chapter of the Holy Quran. Brother, we should go and do research. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he started teaching the, 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 he started teaching the Sahabas how to read Quran. When the Gabriel came, he taught him one pronunciation that we call Hajj. After some time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Elijah Gabriel that ah, this one hand might be difficult for my people. So Elijah Gabriel came back, he taught him another one, he taught him another one. To the extent that we now have seven Aharu. So we can pronounce Quranic recitation with seven Aharu. These Aharu are different from Kiraat. Aru is how it's being pronounced. It's different from how it's being recited. Ikira that we are talking about can have two names. Ikira can be read. Ikira kitabak. Kappa binapsika yoma aleka asiba. Take your certificate. You read what you did. You thought you are going to get first class. No, you have 4.5. You have 4.499999. So the remaining point zero 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 one. we are not going to give you. If you get 4.5, you enter first class. But we are not giving you. You merit it, but you don't have good attitude. That's why we keep telling some of our brothers. Yes, you know Balaga, you know Montiki, you know now, you know something, but you don't have other. You are bullshit. You don't know how to talk to elders. Yes, you are the Imam, but you don't have respect. You are Imam, you know everything. Even you are talking to Allah, Bila Wasita, but you don't have manners. So the way we pronounce came with seven Aru from Hedja Gabriel, who was the teacher of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed it on to the Sahabas. These Sahabas they started teaching people. They started teaching people, and we have different kiraat in Quranic knowledge. There is what we call kiraat. There is what we call riwayat. There is what we call Toriku. There is what we call Wajibu. You see, Kiraat, we come from the seven Aharu. As of today now, we have ten Kori. Kori are those that recite Quran, that we follow them. I have all their names here. Each of these Kori now have two, two students that we are following their recitation, making it what? 20 Riwayat that we have. You know their own teacher, they are 10. That came from Sahabas, that came from Tabi, that came from Tabi Tabu, that was widely established. Among them is Ashami. I'm not talking of them today. The people I'm talking about now, they are more than today. I have all their names here, but we don't have time. I won't be able to mention. So under them, we have each one of them has two two reciters as a student. So if you are doing Musaba Kana, they are doing all this Quranic competition that we need to use. The panelists, the judges that are sitting on the high table that are interviewing the colleague, they will ask him, when are you Kiraat in Takra? From which of the recitation do you want to use? Is it from Kaloon? Is it from somebody from Kufi? Is it from somebody from Baghdad? They will ask you. So Kiraat are the melodious way that we use to recite Quran. It is ten that is well established, but these ten also have two, two, two pronounced students. That is Kiraat. So after that Kiraat, you now have Riwayat. These Riwayat, they are the part at which this student collected it from their world, from their own master. The way we used to collect a hadith. They will say, Aru Weto, the girl Anas Bunu Mali, the girl Abu Rera, the girl this. That is riwayat. Before it now gets to who? To Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we are talking about Quran. We 
be referring to our tabi, we refer to tabi tabiun, we refer to the we refer to the tabiun, tabi tabiun, we refer to the tabiun, we refer to the sahaba, we refer to Nabi Na Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we now refer to what? And Jagebra. And Jagebra to whom Allah Jalla Jalla. This part, all this route is what we call riwayat. So the kiraat we come down to riwayat. So from the wayat now we now go to Torik. Torik is now the part that this student now teaches people. And nobody needs to know all that one. Then what you is now how you yourself you are now disseminating it and how you are using it. Al Quran is telling is not something we should take with levity hand. It's something we should learn and know. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He taught the Sahabas. And after his demise, Abu Bakr became the Khalifa. They were going to different kind of Gazawas. Or let me say Futuwas. So they went one for one particular battle that is called Joshua to Yamama. That was fought in Yemen. And that battle was the one that was used to conquer Musaylima al Khazab. The person who was his abbey during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he claimed to be a prophet. And Abu Bakr said, I'm have to eliminate him. So they went to fight him. There were three like that. With his wife, Shajja, the third person had forgotten his name. There were three like that at the same time. But their principal officer was who? Musaylima al Khazab. So when they went for this Jesuit well, battle of Yamama, like 70 Kura, 70 Quran memorizers, who fast, they all died. So when they now came back, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala, now met Amirul Mu'minin, who was the Khalifa, then. He now told him that, oh Amirul Mu'minin, oh Khalifa to Mu'minin, let us put Quran together. Because if you don't do that, we might lose some words from Quran. Because the majority of all the people that died in this battle of Yamama, they are whom? They are Quran. How they are of the first. Abakar said, I will do that. This is Bidia. And we know that Akulu Bidia till the Olala. Akulu the Olala till the Nari. But there are some Bidia we will do, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold us to ransom. We call this one Ijitiad. That's the other time that we are talking about IBM. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during his time, was there anything like IBM that we spoke before Eagle Adam? There was nothing like a transplanting, like taking one cement to one movie like that. Nothing like that, really. But our scholars, Fukaha, they sat down. The radicals in Islam and Islamic. They said, yes, we can do it as far as we have all the guidance and what to protect us so that they won't put the spermatosia of Mr. A into that of Mr. B. Restricted condition must be attached to all this. Abu Bakr, Raja Allah said, no. I won't do it, it's media. Umar was going up and down, was going up and down. He was supplicating that Allah. Yes, sir, so did Abu Bakr, they asked him. Oh Allah, please, I want you to touch the heart of Umar, the heart of Abu Bakr. Because what you want to do is to protect the integrity of Al Quran. One day like that. Abu Bakr just came, just said, talk, Umar, what you have been talking to me is like you are going to do it. Then I said, who are those? that are going to come together and bring all the parchments. They need to write it on parchment. And what we mean by parchment are letters, or the scapula of animals, like the scapula of uh, camel. It's very big. We can also, if you can see that of camel, we can see that of a cow that we slaughter in our areas. You can see it's very big, like voila. They write it there. They write it on their leaves. And some, they have everything in their head. So who are we going to assign? This task, they now gather some people. Number one of them is Zayd Bunu Sabit. He was among the Kutubul Wahi. He used to be beside Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Most of the times, if the Wahi, if the inspiration is coming. Muaz Bunu Jabal was among them. Ubay Ibn Kaab was among them. Ubay Ibn Kaab used to be among the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That whenever the Quraysh, all the Jews, whenever they rebel against Rasulullah, they say anything in a poetic form. Ubayi Ibn Kaab used to be the one that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, 
Climb my pulpit. Go and do a rejoinder to whatever they have said to me as a misery. So he himself was a Quran. But at the end of the day, as Allah wanted, it was Zayid, Bunu Zabit, that did the final compilation. When they now did this compilation, they had it over to Abu Bakr. When Abakar wants to die, he handed it over to Umar Bunu Khattab. And we all know how Umar Bunu Khattab died. Umar Bunu Khattab died, was killed by Abdurrahman Bunu Muljim. He was the one that used a spear, a poison dagger, to go and kill Umar Bunu Khattab where he was praying. So before Umar died, he now transferred that Quran, that master copy. He transferred it to Absa, his daughter, that was among our Umar to Mumine. The wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married after Aisha. Khadija was the first wife. Umu Salama was the second wife. Aisha was the third wife. Then Afsa was the fourth wife. Afsa was the daughter of Umar Bunu Khattab. Right? Aisha was the son, daughter of Abu Bakr, Abu Abdullah Bunu Kuafu. So the fourth wife of Rasul was the daughter of Umar Bunu Khattab. They transferred that Quran, that master copy. That was compiled during Abu Bakr's time, right? They transferred it to Absa. So when Usman, Bunu Amfan, became the Amirul Mumni after the burial of Umar Bunu Khattab, the Muslim brothers, the Ansar, they went for a battle at Azerbaijan. The Muadirun, they went for a battle. Some of our brothers, in other parts of Arabia Peninsula, they came around for a particular battle in Azerbaijan. So they were now doing recitation of Quran and Kelim. Different kind of riwayat, different kind of pronunciation. Fortunately, there was one of Sahaba during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was still alive. We call him Uzefatu al Yamani. Uzefatu al Yamani was Sahib Siri Rasul. He was the only one that Rasulullah sallam mentioned the name of the Munafikun to. That you see this person is an hypocrite. This person is an hypocrite. This person is an hypocrite. Don't tell anybody. He was the secret keeper of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We call him Uzaifa al Yamani. He now came back to Medina and told the Amirul Mumine, Usman Bunu Afad, Amir, if we don't find something to do about this Quran that our Muslim brothers want to be fighting each other because of different kiraat. We are going to be having misconception and continuous misunderstanding in the folk of Islam. That was how Umar now said, they should call back, they should call back that holy scripture that was with Absa. They now brought it, they did touch deed to it and reproduced five copies. So every other copy that were in circulation, they withdrew it, they now bought it. So the another copy that was reproduced, because the Quran that was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't have any tashkil. What we mean by tashkil is to have fatih and tesra of dogma. It doesn't have. How were they reading it? It was another Sahabi that introduced that. So al Quran al Karim. This is how he came on board. Usman ibn Affan, he ensured that they bring everything together that had already been in circulation, they burnt it. This is the Uja, these idiotic people who are using now, that we can burn Quran. My brothers, how can me and you burn Quran? Yes, you can burn Quran. In what way? And the best thing we can do for Quran is to do what? To do preservation. How do we preserve Quran? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide every one of us. The Quran to light Allah will continue from here next week, inshallah. As I told us, the major discussion is to discuss about this incessant burning of our, or desecration of our holy book, which is Al Quran al Karim. Like what happened before Idul Adha in Sweden. They've done that present, re recently in Russia as well. Like three other European countries have done that. So, what can we do? when we Muslims are facing these challenges. We in Nigeria, can we do something? Yes and no. How are we going to go about it? That is what we want to discuss. May Allah spare our life in the next week.
We could not like Allah probably next week will be another new year of Nigeria. And Allah count us among the people that are going to be to it next year. Our last day of our life in good condition and increment in Iman. So this is how Al Quran and Kareem has come to be. That is why up to today, what we are reading now is Rajimu Usmaniya. The one that was put together during the time of Khalifa to Usman bin Amfa. There are a lot of discussions that have caught, 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 but let me take this so that we can move forward. In Allah, I'm not going to lie to what he is Kurba, when you are in the wal Munkar, wal Baghi, you are in the Kunla, and you are in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking every one of us to do good, which we all know what is good and what is bad. Brothers, all of us know what is good, we know what is bad. Wal Munkar, Wal Baghi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us all social vices that we know that are not good, we should stop doing them. It is this Quran that will keep warning us if we are ready to hit to the court. Allah let us be among the people that we hit to the court and grant us a very good ending and an eternal life in our journey for the world. I told us last week that uh, one of our brother, one of our Muazir here, his wife was kidnapped last week towards this night. Like night, night, right? But Alhamdulillah, she was released on Monday. After paying a very huge amount of money. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to protect their family and protect every one of us. Even today, the brother that cannot read his head last week, he has started, he has brought and bathed his head, do everything, wear good clothes, and even call prayer for us today. May Allah let happiness continue to be in his house. May Allah not let happiness cease in any one of our homes. Ah, so. Our uh, security brothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to be protecting you. Whatever you have left behind at home, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them. We too, wherever we have our family, may Allah continue to protect them. Every one of us, too, may Allah continue to protect us. Because if you are not protected, our family too are not protected. Allah, we are asking you for your divine protection. No anybody that can protect us except you, Allah. Allah, we ask you to continue to protect us. Amen. Allah guide us and be with every one of us. Amen. Our country, Nigeria, Allah guide our leaders aright. The ministers that will be coming on board, Allah choose the best for us. Amen. The House of Assembly, Allah let them be taking the best decision that will favor us. Amen. Wherever we be taking decision from, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let the best decision be in our favor. Allah hawla wa la quwata illa billahi la nina. Allah ma izal islam wa muslimi. Fazilla shirka wa mushriki. Tamir adaka adaha jay. Masuri ibaraka wa muwahidi. Bi rahmatika ya rahmur rahimi. Allah ma ati nukusa ma takuwaha. Wa zakiya anta khayru man zaka. Anta waliyu ya mulaha. Bismillah la zila adur ma ismi shayu fi ladi wa la fi sama. Wa jitu billahi rabba. وفي الإسلام دينا أبي محمد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. I didn't translate what I said in Arabic. I will do it next week. We could write it back. We could write it back. كم ولا سلاك ويا رحمة الله. أيها